Well, good morning. It is such a pleasure. It's an honor to be able to bring you the word of God this morning. So welcome to Life Impact Church Mackay. And my name is Pastor Taya Gibson, and I'm the senior pastor along with my amazing husband, Pastor Brett Gibson. And, you know, we've been doing a series lately called Walking in the New, and it is with great honor I get to talk about compassion today. Now, this is a subject that it, I, I do walk in, and it is something that has always been on my heart, but I'm not going to lie to you. It is a subject where, you know, just because of my own insecurities, I thought and felt inadequate to be compassionate. I thought I didn't have the goods. I don't have the needs. I don't have the ability to give what is what is needed in that in that time. So it's a it's a it's a topic that it's like yeah I'm a good Samaritan or yeah I'm compassionate or yeah you know that's me that that's who I am. But after getting a bit deeper in it, you know, it's such a good question to ask. Who is my neighbor? And and this topic comes out of the the amazing parable of the Good Samaritan. And you know, the, the whole Walking in the New series that we've been doing has come out of three questions that we've been asking. Number one, do I long for the fullness of Christ? Number two, do I desire to know him intimately? And number three, do I want more than anything to discover and be consumed with the glory of God? There are three amazing questions. And out of those three questions, we have got our seven topics that we've been talking about. You know, it's been faithfulness that Pastor Brett's spoken about faithfulness and wisdom. Um, Pastor Yibin has spoken on devotion so powerfully. And Pastor Ken last week spoke about understanding and it's just phenomenal messages. And now I get to talk about compassion. So compassion comes out of these three questions. Do I long for the fullness of Christ? Do I desire to know him intimately? And do I want more than absolutely anything to discover and be so consumed with the glory of God? Well, the question is, am I compassionate? How do I go in the area of compassion? And we're going to look at a very well-known parable. And it's like, oh, hey, I've heard about the Good Samaritan before. And it's like, awesome, awesome. Then you can teach me a few things maybe. But today, I just want to go a bit deeper. Today, I just really want to, to break it down. And how can we put that into today's times? What or how does that apply to me today? And it really helped me work out my life and the areas I struggle with in regards to comparison. I will give you the shed off my back. I can easily give to you. But when it comes to exposing myself in regards to um, helping in an area that I'm not good at, I feel inadequate. And I think, you know, like to be honest, to discover these things, to talk about these things and just to go, hey, what can I do or how do we as a body of Christ help those who are in need? And I remember once and a few of you guys will know this story already. We went to Africa and this was in 2007 and, you know, I was saved in, I think, 85. So I've lived my life uh, with an you know, amazing example of Christ in my in my home. And in 2007, we went to Africa and it was my first trip and everywhere you need compassion. Everywhere I went, there was a need. And I guess being on a mission trip, you, your eyes are open to everything because just even looking at our own town and our own culture and our own society today there is need absolutely everywhere but when you're away and you are purposeful and you are on a mission you see differently and as I saw differently and I saw everything I got so overwhelmed and I remember um, standing on the side of this riverbank and 
I just cried out to God because the need that was there, I thought the need needed a professional or needed somebody with more skills and it was more advanced in, in the Bible than, and than me. And then I saw I'm like, I'm standing before God going, I've got nothing to give to these people. I failed high school. I wasn't great with um, with knowledge and I, I knew the basics of the Bible. I didn't have a skill. I didn't have a trade. I wasn't a nurse or a paramedic or what these people physically needed. And I'm like, it's like I threw my hands in the air and went, no way, I can't do this, I'm done. I've got nothing to offer. So there's my inadequacy, what I thought was needed for the the time. And I just cried out to God and it was like I was handing it to him. And he just said to me, because I said, I've got nothing. I've got absolutely nothing. And it was like I was going to quit, pretty much. And God spoke to me and he said, you know what, Taya, your something is better than your nothing. And I just went, Wow, it just really just snapped me out of my moment of having a tanty or having a I can't do and I, I won't do moment. And God just said, I'm just after your something. What is your something? And so I then went on a journey of discovering my something. And look, I'm still not a nurse. I'm still not qualified in a lot of these areas. I've read the Bible a bit more. So I think, you know, I have matured, <laughs> matured in that area. But but I'm finding my something and that was having confidence in who I am in Christ to offer Christ to somebody else. And so from then, you know, we've learned to discover what we can do. But that's a big scale when you talk about mission work. Let's bring it down to your every day. And I was listening to a message a while ago from Joyce Meyer and, and talking about being in uh, ready in and out of season and being ready in season, not just in regards to sharing your faith, but also in giving, being prepared to give. You know, there's many of times, I've had many a times where I have not had any cash on me. I don't have vouchers. I've got, I don't know, I didn't have food. You know, if you see a need, you want to be able to react in the moment and respond. And I, many times, I don't have this stuff. But she challenged me and she was like being prepared. So what she had, she had multiple like vouchers in her wallet. And when she saw a need, she was able to go here. Here's a fuel card here. Here's a food voucher. And it really stirred me about being prepared and being ready to be compassionate and having something on me to, yes, give them the word of God, but follow it up with action and i think that's what we're going to look at through the good samaritan this morning is about following through with our word you know so if you want to turn with me to luke chapter 10 verse 25 so while you're while you're heading there you know it you know, it starts this parable with the lawyer and he's a guy who was a religious scholar so he was a lawyer in, the, in regards to the law of Moses. So he was well educated in the law of Moses. So he knew his stuff. He was a well and highly educated man. And Jesus had just finished um, teaching and this man stood up. He stood up in front of everybody and he made a point. And he asked Jesus this question to test Jesus on his faithfulness to the law. He said, Jesus, in front of everybody, he said, Jesus, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Now, the more the, the law of Moses was was still in force back then. So it was still applicable and it was still taught and it was still in force. So Jesus knowing this, but also knowing the heart of this man, he, he replied to the lawyer by asking a question. And he pointed it back to the law. He said, well, what does Moses teach us? What is written in the law? Now, out of all the hundreds of laws that this guy could have chosen, he spoke of two. And this is where it says in verse uh, 27. He said, the religious scholar answered, and it, it states, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, 
with all your passion, all your energy and your every thought. And you must love your neighbor as well as you love yourself. But the lawyer goes on to say, maybe wanting to justify himself because that was such a, a simple yet finger pointing answer. Okay, then. Well, who is my neighbor? And God's like, Jesus is like, awesome. I'm glad you asked because here's a parable I want to share with you. So this sets a scene of Jesus, you know, being able to present the parable to all who were listening. So we need to remember also in these times, you know, where the law, Jesus was on earth, but he hadn't left yet. So the law was still in place and there was such a great divide in regards to religion, culture, social status, gender. So it was such a strong and obvious division happening. Um, and this sets the scene in Jerusalem and Jericho. So the Jewish people consider themselves to be an elite, especially those of the religious kind. So there was an elite status happening. And it was so obvious, everybody knew. And um, we're going to read now. We're going to start off in verse, um, let's start in verse 30. I skipped a page. Here we are. In verse 30, Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a certain priest came down that road and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at that place, he came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him, bandaged his wounds, pour, pouring oil on him and wine on him, and set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, take care of him and whatever more you spend, I will come again and I will repay you. What an amazing story of compassion. So here we are. We've got a Jewish man and um, a Jewish priest and we've got a Levite. Now they were coming from Jerusalem. So Jerusalem was where the temple was. And the way that King David set the town up, when he built the town, he, he set Jerusalem, the temple in Jerusalem, but the priests were to live in the surrounding areas. So a priest coming from Jerusalem says, hey, I've just spent time at church. I am now going home. So here we have a Jewish man, a, a priest, a Jewish priest walking past a Jewish man. And we also have a Levite who worked in the temple coming past his own kind. So here we have two men, two Jewish elite religious men who teach the word of God, who teach the law, but not actually living in the law. So how much more do these guys who teach the law should be the ones to stop and have compassion on a Jewish man. But in the parable, being a Jewish man, they were against the Samaritans. So there's a Samaritan and a Jew um, conflict going on and vice versa. The Samaritans didn't like the Jews and the Jews didn't like the Samaritans. There was, a, a, they despised each other. And so they would go out of their way to have nothing to do with each other. So here we have a priest and a Levi come across a Jewish man and they taught about being compassionate. These two men taught about we are to give aid to a person and they didn't lead by example. So here we have these two guys 
walked past, offered absolutely no assistance. There was no triple zero call. There was no, hey, man over there, can you help me? Hey, have anybody got any bandages? Has anybody got oil? Have you got wine? There was just nothing. They came, they saw, and they kept going. And again, the next guy, he came, he looked, he saw, and he kept walking and did absolutely nothing. Now, what does that say for the teaching for those who were around? It was a busy road. It was a notorious stretch. So there was robbers. There were, it was known to be a place where robbers were, um, you know, you get robbed. Obviously, this guy was left for dead. So it was a notorious place. So there was, a, you know, people coming and going. It was the stretch between Jerusalem and Jericho. So there was people there. That's why the robbers hung out because he knew that there's going to be people there that I can rob. So it wasn't like this quiet stretch. So here we have an example of these two religious men walking past and not doing anything. So they teach it, but they don't live it. So that is not showing compassion. So now we have a Samaritan man of all that stopped was a man who despised the Jew and the Jews despised the Samaritan. So he shows compassion on this man. He went out of his way, he stepped across cultural, spiritual, religious, uh, he, he stepped across those boundaries or these barriers that man had put in place and he saw the need and he acted out scripture. In Matthew 5, 44, in the Passion Translation, it says, however, I say to you, love your enemy, bless the one who curses you, do something wonderful for the one who hates you and respond to the very one who persecute you by praying for them. So here we have the example of the Samaritan who went above and beyond for somebody who despised him and for somebody that he despised. He went above in regards to putting him on his own donkey. He put him in an inn and he paid the price, which was equivalent to two days wages. And he says, I'm going to come back. So this man was on a journey. So it shows that he was on a journey. So he was going somewhere and this interrupted his journey. This stopped him from going. And he says, look, and he, he put him in the inn. He spent the night with him. He made sure he was okay. So the next day he's like, hey, I've got to keep going, but I'm going to come back. So not only did he just like give him a Band-Aid, not only just give him a food voucher, he went that little extra. He went above and beyond for somebody who despised him. So I want to come back to the question, who is my neighbor? And it's such a good question because, you know, it is so easy to give, to help those in your family, those whom you love. It's easy to give to your neighbor whom that returns the mower or returns the things that they have borrowed in good condition. It's easy to give. It's easy to be compassionate on those who are likable. But it's hard, like the Samaritan, to show compassion on a person or people who are the very ones who despise you. That's when it's hard. So we need to take the initiative to love our neighbors. Like the Samaritan, he took the initiative to reach out. He knew, he was aware of all the barriers. He was aware of the cultural differences and the, the bitter feud between them. He was aware of that, but he took the initiative to help a person that despised him. He went above and beyond. He went extra for this man. You know, you can tell how much a person loves God by the way he loves people. You can tell how much a person gets along with God by the way he gets along with people. And that is such an impacting statement. Is like when people look on your life, do they say, wow, 
he or she really loves God because I see the way that they love another or what they do for another. Wow, that person must have a really amazing relationship with God because the way they get on with people around them. They're great statements because people are looking on. People are watching. And I don't know about you, I don't want to be like the priest or the Levite that says all the right things, that teaches all all the right things. And you can quote scripture to the the cows come home. But if you don't back it up, if you don't back that scripture up by actually doing and going extra, going above and beyond, then they're, they're empty words. And how does that share the love of Christ with somebody with empty words? And I have three points I want to share with you this morning. Number one, It is not enough just to see a need. We must do something. You know, in verse 31, it says the priest saw him. In verse 32, it said the Levite saw him. He came and he looked and he passed by. And verse 33, it said the Samaritan saw him. So these three guys saw the man in need. They all saw him and they all did something. Now, two of them did the same thing. They walked, they actually went on the other side and they walked by him, but only one stopped and did something. And yet we can be so full of legitimate reasons like the priest. Hey, I've been at church for over a week now and and my wife is waiting for me. And if I don't get home, oh man, she's going to be cranky. I've got to get home to the kids. I've got the food in in the car. There are so many reasons why it's too dangerous. It's going to hurt me. Uh, What am I going to get left with? It's going to expose something. Do you know they're just going to take us for a ride? Look, there's legitimate reasons. You know, my time is precious. My funds are limited and my ability is inadequate. And look, we've got to be honest. I've said them, you've said them, but it's time to change what we say and go, you know what? I am quite busy because the Samaritan man, he was on his way somewhere. He was on a way to a business meeting, but he stopped, you know, and even with, um, with Jesus, you know, with blind Bartimaeus, he was on his way somewhere and he's yelling out and the disciples going, oh man, just there's this blind guy he just goes, keeps going off. And the more that the disciples tried to stop him, the more Bart yelled louder and Jesus stopped. He had compassion on him and he stopped. He says, hey mate, what can I do? the woman with the issue of, issue of blood. Jesus was on a mission. He was going somewhere. But the woman with the blood, she reached out and Jesus stopped. And Cornelius in Acts 10, he stopped. You know, these stories of stopping for another, that's going the extra. It's going above and beyond. We're all busy. We're living in such a busy time and it should not be the reason why we don't stop. So number two, what do you, what, sorry, what you do depends on what you see. So what you do depends on what you see. So why did the priest and the Levite cross to the other side of the road when they saw him? Because what they saw was a bother. What they saw it was too dangerous. Now, the, the priest, he had to follow the law. So maybe touching a, a man who was bleeding and bruised and nearly half dead, it was unclean. Maybe there was there's things that stop us because, oh, it's going to cost me. Oh, I'm just going to flick the channel. I'm going to walk to the other side. I see that, that person up the road, but I'm just going to head to the other direction. So what you do depends on what you see. Do you see like the Samaritan man in need or do you see according to the priest and the Levite and go, he's a bother. It's going to cost me. It's going to hurt. It's too dangerous. It's not going to happen. So they saw and their actions became quite clear of what they thought. So the Samaritan man saw a man who was desperate for help and he became his neighbor 
because he saw. Number three, what you see is determined by what you are. So this reveals your heart. You know, the priests and the Levites should have been the ones to help because they were the ones who were teachers of the law and should be the ones to act according to the law. You know, in our church, we've got electricians, um, we've got mechanics, we've got cabinet makers, we've got painters, and we've got mums in our church. So the electrician, he will notice the loose wire. The cabinet maker, he will notice the loose chair. The mechanic, he will notice um, hearing a car pulling up with a, the loose fan belt and a painter will see the paint, the, the peeling paint. And the mother will notice the children running around something dangerous. So what you see is determined by what you are. So what we see if we're children of God, if we're the ones who confess to live for him, we post amazing scriptures and we encourage and, and motivate people on social media and those that are around us. You know, we declare that we stand up for righteousness, goodness and truth. Then we should be the ones to see as Jesus sees because of who we are as children of God. Are we willing to step out in faith knowing there is possibility of taking advantage of? Are we willing to set aside our busy schedule for the sake of another? Are we willing to make sacrifices? And are we willing to live a higher standard of love? You know, responding to the love of God, you respond in love and in faith and then you display that love by loving our neighbor, by loving another, by being prepared. Like I said earlier, in this season of COVID, right at the beginning, you know, I really sensed in my heart to be prepared. There's going to be people who have lost jobs or a partner have lost a job or um, the hours have been cut back. And so financially, it'd be a tough season for people. So I went and got a whole stack of vouchers like food vouchers and I just had them in my car and I, I delivered a few and there was a, I had a couple left and I was like Holy Spirit you know I just want to be sensitive I want to see as you see and I want to be able to see the need that you present to me and I just simply bought um, something on Facebook and I went to the person's house and I picked it up and God said, give it to that person. So I just tucked it in an envelope with the money and I, and I bought the item off that person. I gave her the envelope and I just simply drove away. That was it. She sends me a message like, you've done something wrong. You know, by mistake, were you supposed to put this voucher in the envelope? And I said, yeah, yeah, I meant to do it. You know, I just... Um, God bless, have a, a great evening. I can't remember, it was something like that. And she's like, you really have no idea. It's my mum's 60th birthday today. We lost, um, she lost her dad, so that the mother lost her husband only a couple of months ago and she really wanted to do something nice for her mum. And so it's just those little things. So we don't think major, you know, putting up a, 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 a somebody like the Samaritan up in the, the inn going to the other side of the world with a shipping container. It's about the everyday things. Are you prepared to do, to be like Christ in the everyday and be willing? I think it's a heart of willingness. Are you willing to be compassionate and go out of your way? You know, it is easy to just go, here, here's a voucher and keep walking. But I think there's a challenge on us to go the extra to go above and beyond where we haven't gone before. So who is our neighbor? Is it somebody who is in need? Yeah. And you know what? You have the ability to help. Well, I thought I didn't. I thought I was inadequate, you know, but we have the ability to help. And as a church, we have our international giving and we have our national giving because and, and our local giving because there's people internationally that need us, that need you. There's people locally that needs you. And it's not just to do it as a church, but do it individually. So we have opportunities. And oh, it was just the other day, I just finished preparing this message and I jumped in the car. I never listened to the radio, but it was on. And it was about a local organization called Give It. 
G-I-V-I-T. And she explained what they did and they just gave, you could register the need as person who is in need. And then a person could look at their, their site and go, hey, I've got these household items. I've got this to give. And I'm like, it is really that simple. Yes, it costs us. Yes, it may hurt. But the heart of giving, like Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all your passion, with all your energy, with all your thoughts, you must love your neighbor as well as yourself. There was a lady, Katie Davis. Um, she started a, an, a missionary at a school in um, in Africa, and I can't, I can't remember the name of um, the book or the, the the organization that she started. But when she came back, she was a seventeen year old girl. Um, just loves the Lord and just went to serve him. And when she came back to America, they said, look, is this hard? Like giving and, you know, you're away from your family. And she simply said, look, I don't like going hungry. So I don't want my neighbor to go hungry. She's like, I don't want to be naked. So I don't want my neighbor to be naked. And it's just like, it is that simple. I like food <laughs> and I don't want anybody else to miss out on food. I like to look nice. I don't want anybody else to miss out on clothing, especially now when it's cold. Look for the little things. And I, I can guarantee you when you start looking, you'll be like the Samaritan man, the Levite and the priest. You will have an opportunity that will look and see and then you'll be faced with a choice. You know, we've got a whole world full of need. There is millions and millions of people right now. There's refugee camps, there's kids going hungry. There is so much out there and you can almost go, it's too big like I did by the side of the river. It's too big. Who am I? What am I to do? You know, we can flick the TV off and we can hit ad after ad because of the need and need and need and it's everywhere we look. When you, know, you think, well, why isn't God doing anything? But God needs people. We are in control here on earth. And if we don't do anything, it stops God moving. So man is corrupt and there's a lot of corruption happening in the world. But I want to focus on you. You are amazing. You have a need yourself. But when you go out and you reach out to somebody else, God takes care of your needs. So just to encourage you today to walk in compassion, who is your neighbor? Have eyes to see as Jesus sees and be like the Samaritan man who is willing and able to help even in his busy schedule. So I'll leave you with those three points again. Number one, it is not enough just to see a need. We must do something. What you do depends on what you see. And number three, what you see is determined by what you are. So I pray that this message has in, inspired you, impacted you, but also propel you to go and see that need. You know, in verse, it finishes in verse 36 and Jesus kept speaking. He went back to the lawyer and he said, so which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And the lawyer answered and he said, he who showed mercy on him. And Jesus said to him, now go and do likewise. So today we end with that. Now go and do likewise. God bless and have an amazing weekend.